welcome to another Beer for Breakfast ABB. I am Danielle from Marty and Danielle in the morning on 91X. Thanks for making time to hang out with us on ABB. Thanks for inviting me in, Beer Queen. As always, we have my drink, beer drinking partner in crime with me, Paul Segura, brewmaster of Carl Strauss, and we're drinking Carl Strauss beer today. Happy Oktoberfest, Happy Oktoberfest. Yes. <laughs> it's that time of year again. Uh, what is Oktoberfest? Oktoberfest is, uh, how much time do we have? You've got it all, is this is your time, my friend. celebration of a marriage between the Crown Prince Ludwig of Bavaria to Princess Theresia, uh, which I think was in 16-something. Um, anyway, it's the an ongoing celebration of the marriage that happens every year in Munich, and people come from all over the world to celebrate that marriage still to this day, and it's the only celebration that's got its own beer. Ah, oh, that's Fest. why the beer, to celebrate the marriage. Ah, no. And when does Oktoberfest officially start? runs into October. Uh, I think it ends. It's different every year. Um, so I'd have to look at the calendar. But I think I, this year it's October 4th. I think it Because I, 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 I wanted to go look at it. I was like, I know it's <laughs> Yeah, thousands of people come from all over the world to go to Munich for Oktoberfest every year and they drink this beer. And, you know, um, it's pretty cool that we can celebrate it even here in San Diego. There's, there's rituals that go along with that party, right? Isn't there something sort of dancing on the table or? There's usually oompa music okay. and like, yeah, lots of dancing and shenanigans and yeah. people dressed weird like me right now. <laughs> and um, Traditional German. Yeah, and I'm not at all German. I'm just a, you're in you know, a Chula Vista kid. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so with, is this a true, the Oktoberfest that Carl Strauss comes out with, is this a true Oktoberfest style, like what they would be drinking in Absolutely, Germany? yeah. We, we bring in German malts, German hops, um, German yeast, and we do it the traditional way. Carl Strauss has been doing it the traditional way now for 33 years. And um, I look forward to this time of year every year because... You only get this beer once a year, and when it comes out, when it's fresh like it is right now, it's it's pretty cool. And I drink it, and I go, "Wow, I forgot how good this was." Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Carl, German. Yep. Yeah, and so this is an original recipe from him, or is it varied over the years? Or there was a little bit of variance. Uh, we started out um, in 1989 in February with a beer very much like this. And then uh, in Germany, they kind of switched to a, a blonde Bavarian style, which is kind of Pilsner-esque. And then they kind of came back to the Märzen-like style, which is slightly darker, a little bit more caramel-like flavor. Um, it still has that toastiness. It's still a very clean lager that's very malt forward. Um, so it's bready and toasty and biscuit-like. Um, Do you toast at the brewery? Is that what No, we buy the malts. Uh, they're Munich malts and Vienna malts, mostly Munich malt. Um, and then we blend the two together, um, very little else. Um, and then we, you know, use, uh, I believe the hops were Hollertown middle fruit in this. And then we use South German lager yeast. And we ferment it very cold, uh, 54 degrees for at least three weeks. And so we, you know, I think we're on the cusp right now of, of starting Oktoberfest officially but we've already been making this beer for a couple months now yeah. you're just trying to get it colder for us for fall exactly. right? just like channeling those cold. <laughs> yeah. uh going back to what you're saying about the marts and because you know as we are getting into oktoberfest season you will see oktoberfest lagers and you will see marts and what is the difference the very similar excuse me in style uh I just had a big quaff <laughs> Um, I am the I am the server that comes up to you that asks <laughs> how is your food as you just took a bite. <laughs> so the word Märzen literally means March, like the month of March in Germany, and so they brew that beer in the month of March and then kind of lager it through the summer and reintroduce it in the fall. But it I takes that long to lager it. Well, they back in the days before refrigeration, they would like put ah. it in these really cold caves and you know, ah, yeah, ah. and just let it kind of slow ferment and. So as a brewmaster, do you like kind of nerd out that we're still using 
similar, not the same techniques, but similar techniques that were used centuries ago to make Well, we caves. now have refrigeration, mm -hmm. so we don't have, and plus there's very few caves in San Diego, mm -hmm. but um, it's pretty cool that that this is a style of beer that just continues to go on, mm -hmm. and it's it's very approachable. It's like, it's a beer that anybody can, can drink, right? Here we are in San Diego, the home of the IPAs, and this is a very malt forward beer, but it still has, it's still very well received by a lot of people. It's only 5% also, which is perfect. So that's weird too. To enjoy. People think it's like higher in alcohol because, of the because everybody food. gets like crunk. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only because they drink this beer in a big, you know, one liter Steins mm -hmm. and they drink three or four. And, mm -hmm. and, and popular like association, you might think malt liquor. That is not this, is it? No. No, malt liquor is usually up around 8%. Yeah, they're higher. Um, but, so. it, but it used to be a thing where anything over 4.5% ABV had to be called something other than beer. So like a lot of the large breweries started calling that malt liquor if it was over 4.5%. Why, why the disassociation to the word beer? Do you know? Uh, I think it's just one of those crazy, you know... Alcohol department things. Yeah, where they one of those holdovers gonna, or leftovers from... Out. Yeah. And then for you, prohibition and liquor and stuff. Interesting. Right, but brewers got smart like in the 80s when this whole like rebirth of craft beer started. They started calling beers with pale ales and porters and stouts and all of these things yeah. rather than malt liquor. Yeah. No, they were over yeah. four and a half. Diversifying their product line. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that what's yeah. makes sense? Like, sure. You don't just always get a, a you know, you get the many. Right, the yeah. Versions of yeah. The, the many super friends of the Justice League. Right. Did, it, did I just do that? There, there, it, <laughs> is. there <laughs> it is. There it is. And while this is so exciting because we, uh, in about two weeks, are having specifically an Oktoberfest beer for breakfast ABV, we will have some of the best Oktoberfest beers that are offered in San Diego, Alesmith, Epic, Society. It's so going to be really exciting. There's Beautiful some, Oktoberfest. There's some really good Oktoberfest being brewed. And I think uh, Epic makes some of the best lagers. So Oktoberfest are always lagered. Epic makes great lagers. But Alesmith is also insanely good. There's some great Oktoberfest producers in San Diego. Is there is there an event where we can get only Oktoberfest? We're working on this. Ah, uh, real? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Beer Queen's uh, wheels. Yeah. Are I like it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> trying to make it work. This has been a weird year, as we all are very aware that <laughs> sure. it's weird getting sure. back into things. Um, but Paul, before we get into the second beer from Carl Strauss, can you give us a little update on what's going on with the brewery in general? I mean, we get to see you every week, but we are championing other breweries. But what's happening at Strauss? We're staying busy um, despite the sort of uh, weird times and the unknown future that's out there. I mean, um, we are a brewery that's fortunate enough to package our beers, and the packaged beers still have a home in the supermarkets and the liquor stores and all of that. Um, our restaurants are, are doing good. Um, and fortunately, a lot of them have parking lots and we have outdoor seating where people can distance themselves and they can still come and get fresh food and beer and they can get stuff to go. So we're staying busy despite the uncertain times and um, we're still making lots of beer and still innovating, still mm. doing like new, new beers like the one we're gonna have. Yeah, speaking of innovation, so I am one of the very few people that still got to hang out with Paul almost weekly during the pandemic. We'd meet up to exchange beers and such and this is a beer that I remember you guys were going through all these different iterations of it, and you kept giving me samples. And you're like, what do you think of this one? What do you think about this one? And I mean, I'm not going to take any credit for this, but I feel like I had a little, I mean, maybe a little bit I of uh, what I thought of this. you deserve some credit for this because, <laughs> and I'll harken back to uh, some of the first iterations of this beer that you tasted. Um, knowing that you're not a fruit beer person, you're more of an IPA person, as I am. I think we both kind of wanted a beer that was IPA forward mm. with a little bit of fruit kind of, you know, yeah. lingering in the finish. Yeah, you can taste the zest. I, I was like, this I, is my I first try of it out of the cans, the yeah. final. No, you can smell it right off the top, just like you oh, ripped open yeah. it up, like a tanjo or, mm -hmm. um, and as you said, hop forward. Wow, what a great combination yeah. this is. We use a lot of citrusy hops in this. Um, and it's hard to tell where the IPA kind of stops in the, tangerine kind of takes over mm -hmm. right yeah. in the middle somewhere but you can find them you know what i mean it's like a teeter-totter i'm over yeah. here there's the hop there's the tang okay well and many times when we talk about these different ipas that are fruited 
specifically citrus, we sometimes were like, oh, this tastes more like the juice or this tastes more like the rind. I'm getting both in this. First, I get a little bit of the rind with the bitter of the IPA, but then it finishes off with a nice little sweet. Well, we use a lot of the rinds in the brew kettle, and then we use a lot of the puree in the fermentation, which gives you that sort of blend of the peel and the, the fruit itself. The fruit. Fruit. So you get the entire fruit, yeah. But you also get some of the, you know, the citrusy hops in there. It's On the sixer, right. it says tangerine, pine, sweet fruit. Yeah, yeah. What are the sweet fruits that are in there? Well, it's all tangerine. Uh, you don't yeah, use okay. anything but tangerine in there. That helps, um, the, that helps describe. So this is a beer that's been added to our core lineup. Um, and part of it was born out of a collaboration we did with um, the Rheingeist Brewery out of Cincinnati. Oh, all the peels! All the peels, which is a collaboration with them, and that was a Blood Orange IPA, and we kind of went, wow, we like this. What if we kind of took some of the ideas from this and, and brought out something brand new mm -hmm. for the masses? And home run. Perfect. Tangerine was kind of really, really good. What's the ABV on this? Uh, this is 7%. Okay. okay. That's also a home run. Or is it 6.5? This oh, guy 6. is... No, it's 7. Is it 7? It is okay. 7. Okay. Welcome to San Diego with your 7% <laughs> IPAs. It's how we do things. Mm -hmm. um, Paul, you know, I'm sure you can't tip your hand too much, but as we're getting into the fourth quarter of the year, will we expect some of our Carl Strauss favorites? Is maybe peanut butter cup or your holiday beer or anything like that do we have to look forward to? Well, we do a different holiday beer every year, right. so that's an absolute yes. Is this, and, is this year the 12th? Uh, is it 11? This is going to be the 12th year in the 12 beers of Christmas. So it's going to be the last year. So if you have the full vertical, this will end your <laughs> Oh my gosh. We've encouraged for 12 years now, everybody go buy a 12 beer case. There's 12 bottles in a case. And then just each year do a vertical tasting. So at the end of it all, you should have one beer left of the very first case, which was parrot in a palm tree. And I'm not going to have the 12 egg. No, no, no. Tip Is it always in a dark or heavier beer for the season? Yeah, we designed each year to be laid down so that the beers could age. And I'm happy to say that I've I've actually cracked a bottle of parrot in a palm tree recently. It's, it's held up. And it's a lot to expect a beer to hold up for 12 years, yeah. but it, it has. So, we, okay. yeah, we designed each recipe to be able to withstand the years to wow. hold up. Marty, I think that uh, we should muscle Paul into inviting us for his 12-year vertical tasting. I would, oh, love, the girl stress I would love to have you guys <laughs> to the Casa Segura <laughs> oh, to do yeah. a full, year ver a full yeah. 12 year vertical. It seemed like we need to muscle it too hard. Not no, not at all. no. Right. I'd be happy to have you. I'll call Mrs. Segura. She'll be all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul, before, you know, obviously we get to see you every day. We're very close to the Carl Strauss brand. But, I mean, what would you like the people to know about what's going on with Strauss? You guys been doing it since 89. I mean, we're still pushing the envelope. We're still uh, creating all the beers that we hope you guys love. And we're introducing new brands like these. Um, go to our restaurants and give these a try if you haven't already. And, um, you know, as always, support your local independent brewery. Yeah. There it is. Well, Mr. Brewmaster Paul Segura of Carl Strauss, um, you want to come in Friday morning and have beer for breakfast with Marty? Mm, twist my arm. Blow under the blow. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this Friday, we will have beer for breakfast on 91X. That is 91.1 .1 on your FM radio if you're in Southern California. You can stream us for free at 91X.com or download that app in the App Store to hang out with us at all times. We have beer for breakfast every Friday morning at 9, 10 Pacific Standard Time. Myself, Paul, and Marty all get together and start the weekend early. Oh, no. Oh, we can't. We can't. Yeah. Cheers with we your We have to say class. prost. Prost. Prost to local <laughs> independent craft beer. Prost. Prost. Yay! Happy Oktoberfest. 91X.